Hi everybody, it's Paula. I am going to show you um, a few extra steps that you will need to prepare your plaster mask for making a press mold. And we will be using clay that will be fired in the kiln to actually make these press molds. So there's a few things that we need to pay attention to um, as we get this mold ready. So there's still a lot of plaster that's kind of falling and breaking loose from this mold, from the mold making process. And the more that you make molds for casting or press molds, the more that you will learn to be sort of cleaner with your um, application of plaster and you'll avoid sharp edges because all of that means that the plaster is going to fall into the mold or fall into the clay that will be fired in the kiln and that's bad. Plaster and clay, that uh, clay that's going to get fired in the kiln, they do not go together at all. So we have to keep the clay that we're using for mold prep separate from the clay that we're going to be using to fire in the kiln. But that also means I want to eliminate as much plaster that's loose and that's going to fall off um, in the mold. So you have to make a couple pre um, practice pressings um, or tests with pieces of clay to see what you have and um, kind of remove a bunch of that loose plaster. So I have a couple different tools here that I'm going to use to kind of help clean up the outside of the mold and also maybe do just a little bit of detail work on the inside. If you um, recall the eyes, I had plastic over my eyes and it looked really weird inside of the mold. So I've actually been um, working on this a little bit before I started the recording. And through the process of scraping away the plaster with this little loopy clay tool, I ended up going to the plaster bandages, which aren't too far uh, into the into the mold and so it's not the end of the world there's a lot of thick plaster here but um, you know try to avoid loosening up the plaster bandage if you can but if you do then I'm going to show you how I'm going to remedy that so we can always work with um, with what we have I also have for cleanup a sponge and I did mention that I really prefer green scotch Brite scrubbies I like them because they're thinner and they have more flexibility, but I didn't have one. And so I just went into um, my uh, cabinet and pulled out this uh, sponge and it has an abrasive front soft back, but this is gonna work great. And you'll want a little water for working with it. The water helps to um, help with the abrasion and removal of sharp pieces, but it also keeps dust down. I did mention the sure form in the last video, and this can also be good for more on the edges. You might even want a toothbrush to get into some of the little nooks and crannies. And then I have my clay that I've designated as plaster clay. So again, if you watched the last video, I asked you to save the clay that you had used um, to seal your mold to the table in a separate bag. So this is that clay, and it's going to be full of plaster from what I'll be doing. In this demo and I'll keep this as plaster clay until it hardens even then I could add more water and continue to use it but this will never be clay that I will be used for a finished piece that will go into the kiln so I'll probably say this five ten times in this video but it's really important that we that we keep them separate okay so a couple things that I had started working on were these edges I don't want um, them sharp as I press clay in. Again, I don't want anything that can break or fall in. So I've just been going along with this um, sponge, a little bit of water, and just rounding and smoothing out the edges. I still have a little clay in the mold from the process of adding the plaster to the outside, the pottery plaster, and that's okay. You're probably not going to get all the clay out and you'll add more clay. All right, so you're going to want to just continue to work your way around these edges to really soften those up. If something breaks and it's not like the whole mold, it's just a little chip, then just smooth out that chip 
because when we use these as press molds, we don't need to put clay all the way out to the edge. We can just do, you know, um, two finger widths in or whatever. I mean, the cool thing about these molds is we could press 50 noses if we wanted. <laughs> um, so, uh, in any case, I'm also going to work just a little bit on the outside. So if you don't have a sure form, then get some kind of a sponge or even just break off the larger chunks. It doesn't have to be totally smooth, but we just don't want sharp things that are going to break off. If you have sharp or pokey things and you don't have a sure form, you could use your loop tool from your kit. You could find a serrated edge butter knife or something like that and use that to scrape edges away. It's going to be an unpleasant sound. So it'll take away high points. And this is not nice to your clay tool. Um, so just know that I have two separate sets of clay tools. One is for working with plaster and one is for working with clay, usually when I'm in my studio, um, just so I can be nicer to um, the tools and designate them for their proper usage. But if you're beginning, um, you can use the same set of tools for both, but the rule is clean these really well before you use them with clay if you've used them with plaster. Okay. Um, and again, the sure form, which is um, a tool that I really love, really just smooth that surface out. But again, as much as I would love to just smooth this whole thing out, it's not necessary. So I just want those high points down. Okay. Now I'm going to focus on the inside of the face. There's um, a little bit of weirdness here on the chin where um, my mask kind of came in and it filled in with plaster. So I'm going to scrape a little of that back. There are tools that are specific for working with plaster. They um, are basically like little files, little metal files in different shapes and different um, uh, amount of teeth that you can use um, for these purposes. I'm just, as I said, sort of working with what I have and working with what I think most of you just might have access to. There was a little air pocket there, so I knocked that down. Okay. Another thing to know about these molds is that while the plaster bandages did pick up some skin detail, um, because I had plastic on my head, plastic over my eyes, um, it didn't pick up like perfect detail. So I'm going to have to go back in and do some cleaning of the clay when I um, am finished with my press mold. So it's okay if you scrape away some detail um, because we're using clay and we can always push that, um, we can add that detail back in. All right. So around the edges. So I did do a little bit of wiping away at the eyes where the saran wrap was um, because it just looked a little too weird. I actually took some clay and did a little test pressing in there to see what it looked like, just a little handful of clay. And, um, and then based on that, scraped away a couple of high points using this loop tool um, and then used this sponge to kind of wipe more away. And also again, don't forget the toothbrush can help do a little. But I will say that in that process, I did um, get a couple plaster bandages that came loose in the eyes. And so I really carefully, well, I was careful not to try to just rip that away. If I rip at it, it's just going to tear this whole layer wherever that bandage is. And if it's 
under another bandage, it's going to tear many layers away. So I'm gonna take a uh, X-Acto knife and just carefully trim away that excess gauze. I just don't want it to get stuck in my clay and then end up pulling. And you all might have this same issue and you might not. Okay, so at this point, I feel like I am pretty ready to um, test out this mold. As I said, it's been several days um, and so it's dried out a little bit. It won't feel quite as cold or as wet as it did when you first made it. If you need to speed up the drying process a little bit, you can put a fan on it. A fan with heat is better and kind of rotate it, you know, let it aim at the inside and at the side and at the bottom. So I kind of babysit it as I'm trying to circulate air around it. Um, you could put it in an oven if you had convection that sort of circulated the air through. Um, I usually crack the door open to allow the steam to escape. But the one thing to keep in mind when you are warming up these molds to help dry them is that Pottery plaster, number one, that we used, and most plasters, if they get heated up too much, they go through a calcification process. And what that means is it basically softens up the plaster. And it kind of turns the plaster into more of a chalky substance and therefore makes it harder for using as a press mold, among other things. So the temperature at which it starts to calcify is 120 degrees, and most ovens don't go lower than that temp. Um, you know, you'll be using this mold a handful of times. And so if you do get it a little, um, above that temperature, it's probably going to be okay. But if you were a serious mold maker, that would be a serious no, no. Okay. Um, so that's my disclaimer. All right. I am going to grab a couple little scraps of wood, or you could use newspaper or something just to kind of help the um, mold stay upright. I maybe even could have um, flattened out an area for this, but it's going to be fine if I just get some wood. Okay. And then I'm going to take the plaster clay. And I'm just going to press it into various parts of the mold. to get the dry chunks of plaster out of it. And if you press clay into a wet mold, it's going to have a hard time releasing from the mold. So that's another reason that you need to wait several days until it dries or heat it up to um, evaporate the water. So there is one of my eyes and part of my nose. You can see there's a little plaster that came with it. And that's great. I don't want that plaster to be something that comes out in my other castings. So to go back to why you want to dry mold, plaster, once it's dry, absorbs moisture. This is water-based clay. And so what will happen is when you put the clay into the plaster, if the plaster is dry, it will pull the water out of the clay. So that's good because the clay also needs to lose water to dry. It's not going to happen like 
instantly, but it sort of slowly pulls out the moisture. And as the clay dries, um, it actually starts shrinking just a little bit. And so then it will remove a little bit easier from the mold. I will have another video on actually how to press clay into the mold. There are some important things that you need to know. So um, please um, also watch that tutorial. And again, I'm just going around and pressing clay and trying to get the plaster out of it. And this edge is a little thin, so I'm gonna be careful not to punch through it. Um, I have a hand on the outside supporting the clay. If you were worried about that, again, you could patch it with some plaster bandages. So you can see my clay is sticking a little bit. I really pushed it in and made it thin. And so that makes it a little trickier to get out. If you ever have clay and it is like stuck in your mold and you can't get it out, you can take another chunk of clay and you can either be really gross and lick it just to get a little bit of spit on it to make it a little sticky or you can use some water. Um, clay is just mud and, and a few other things from the earth. It's not toxic, um, at least this clay. So just use water. <laughs> And you can then stick it onto the back and that will release the shape. Okay, so I'm going to call this good and I'm going to clean up my area um, and switch it from a plaster workstation into a clay workstation. So again, we don't want plaster and clay to mix. So let's get this area really cleaned. I'll make sure all of my tools that I'll be using for clay um, that I had used for plaster are also clean. I will swap out my water container um, because I don't want water that was used for plaster to be used for clay. So um, I'm actually just gonna set this water aside. Do you remember in the last video how I told you plaster should never go down the drain? So you let the water settle top and pour off the top. Same thing for clay. You don't want clay to go down your sink drains. So you will want like a rinse bucket for your hands to get all the excess clay off before you um, wash them in your sink. Okay, so you'll wanna check back in the next video where I actually show you how to do some press molds.